Hello all. Welcome to the course Azure Data Engineering. In this, we are going to discuss real-time scenarios. Now in this lecture, let us try to understand one simple real-time scenario. That is what we are going to process a CSV file, which is going to follow uh, some specific pattern in every line. Basing on that, we need to divide that data into multiple columns actually. What does it mean? So here, if you see, Assume that this is the input data you are getting in the CSV file in a different lines. So you can observe that every line following some structure. So here, if you observe, it is starting with a colon, semicolon. Then we have some data, product one, product two, like that. Then we have a colon, then text one, then colon, and then area. So actually, uh, this is the input data in the form of CSV you are getting into some location. Now this we need to divide into like this actually. So if product one should product, this information should come under product column and this information should come under this column, description column and this uh, area information should come under area column actually. So this is what the requirement, okay. So now let us try to understand how to do this in the uh, Azure Data Factory data flows, the transformation. So before going to see that, please like, subscribe and share the video. So now if you come to the data factory, so you can see that we have a file. You can see this is the file, customer view file. In that we have a data exactly whatever we discussed. So this is what you can see. So this is the incoming data. Okay. So this data, you need to convert into three columns actually. So that data we need to store into this table. That is what customer table in the database. So that's what the first one is the product ID. Next one is description. And then next one is the area. So such a way, first of all, table is ready. So in the table, let us see, select store from customer view. So if you run this query, we don't have any records in this particular uh, table actually. So that's why zero rows are displaying. Okay, you can see in the results section. Now go, go here. Now first thing is what you need to fetch that data, right? So let us try to create a uh, add source. Then in that, we need to create a data set. So source is what blob storage, destination is SQL server. So such a way because we are creating a source data set continue it is a csv type file continue then data set name ds underscore uh, from blob some structure try to follow in the naming and then customer view okay some some related name so that easily you can identify even in later so same name already exists let us give some different thing. So this is the linked service which already created, then browse that particular file. So in the source, we have a customer view CSV. So this is what the file. Then first row is not a header actually. So we am not checking that click OK. So with that source is set up. Now you can see the data preview. So meanwhile, let us try to, yeah, see, this is the data which is fetched from the file actually, CSV file. Now, very first thing what we are going to do here is, it is, first of all, uh, there are delimiters. So you need to divide this text, one line, basing on some delimiters actually. So first I am dividing this text with a delimiter semicolon. So that this part is going to come as a one string. And this is going to come as a another string. So for that, what we are going to do in the data flow is we have a transformation called derived column. So you are going to derive a new column. So I'm just taking column one because names we not yet finalized, right? Then here, what is the expression? So here we are writing an expression. So here we have a, we need to split this one, right? Basing on a some delimiter. So that's what we have a function called split. What is the string you want to split? That is what the column one. So just remember this name. I will show you where this column one. You can see that whatever data you fetched, 
system ADF automatically assigned some column name that is column underscore one. So that what that is what you called here, right? Now what is the split character basing on which delimiter you want to divide that? So we want to divide that basing on the semicolon actually. So that's all. So now basing on this, if you see the data preview. So as we discussed, let us click on refresh. As we discussed, you can see semicolon here, semicolon here. This whole thing, product nine, for example, colons, text nine is one string, area nine is another string. See that? Okay, this is column one. This is the column name which we given. See here, we have a square brackets. Click on that. See? Semicolon here it is started. So before that, there is no text. So that is going to take as an empty text. That is what column of index one. So remember these indexes. And then column one of two, that is what the, whatever we told from here to here. Then this one is what? Area nine. Is it or not? So last one. So this is what actually area part, this one. Okay. So indexes you need to remember now. Index two, still we need to split further. And index three is fine. So let it be that. So you need to you need to derive further, right? So I'm going to take on top of this uh, transformation, we need to do further actually. So further split we need to perform. So that is what you can see column two we are introducing. In the column two, what we are doing, let us try to get the clarity. See here, in the column one of two, this section you need to split further. Split further means basing on the delimiter colon. That is what we need to get the clarity. Is it? So that is what index column one of two. So accordingly try to derive the expression here actually. So split column one of two actually. So this we need to split basing on the colon right so that you can see the final output now data preview so you can see column one of course this is the thing which is coming from here and then column two you derived here that part you can observe that product one description one so that is what right so from column one you can take area area column data and from column two, you can take both product uh, column and description column data. So that is what actually, let us try to take one more derived column, which is the last one, where you are going to take a proper column names. So that is what actually the first one is product. Then the second one is description, description, and the last one is area so now the product column is what actually you can see the previous section output so product column is in the column two index one is it or not so such a way you need to take care so first of all for this let us go to the expression builder easily you can do so what we can do column two of one so that is what that value is going to assign so similarly for the description you can see here what is the description in the column two, index two actually. So same thing you need to write down here, right? So like here. So I am writing directly column two of two. See? Okay. So that's all. Now for the area section, you can see the previous derived column, column one of three. Here we have a area. So let us try to take that. So column one of three H. Now you can see the data preview after setting that. Then your data is converted exactly from here to here actually. So that's what you can observe. Product data, description data column, area column data. Now further we need to divide, remove these three columns, right? These three not at all required now. So for that, what is the transformation we can use? Select transformation. 
So you see, I don't need uh, this column one, then column one, then COL two. So these three only we need. So that's all. You can see the data field. Now this data we are going. We need to load into this particular SQL table. So for that, what we need to do? Let us see. Uh, come to the data factory. Yeah. So you see, only required columns are there now. Now try to take a sync. Yes, done. Then in the sync, try to create a data set which is pointing to this particular uh, table actually. So that, for that, create a new data set. So it is SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, continue. Then linked service which we already have. So give the data set name, data set uh, DB customer view. Now select the table that is customer view. Let us try to find out. Yes, this is the table. You can see customer view. So that's all. Click OK. So you can see this is the table. These are the three columns we created already. Now come here. Yes, data set is created. Now go to the settings and go to the especially the mapping part. So here mapping, that means columns you need to map. So you have to check actually. So, uh, so you can see product ID. So here input column product is mapping to product ID. So now all of them mapped properly. So this is what the final data we need. Now data flow is ready. To run this data flow, what we need to do? Take a pipeline, then take the activity called data flow and to the data flow two. So that is what the data flow name, let us select that. So with that mapping is done. Now let us try to validate before running. So no errors. Now if I click on deb debug, it is going to execute as defined in the data flow as defined in the data flow and the final data storing into this particular table. So once again, let us see, we don't have any data in this particular table. So you can see there is no data first of all. Now let us try to run this pipeline to run this data flow. Click on debug. So it is in queue. Just refresh it. Yes, it is in progress. So even you can monitor its progress actually click by clicking on details part. So you can see here how much it is progressed in general. You can see that how many suppose in uh, if you have a um, suppose thousands of uh, lines are there uh, records are there. So at that time you can see its progress like uh, 100 records already written 200 300 like that some number which is increasing uh, you can observe that. So you can refresh it. So it is done, succeeded. So only thing is go to the database. Now you see this particular table. So these whatever nine records saying, those nine records you must observe here. Click on run, observe the data. See that, okay? See, total nine records coming under these particular columns. So this is the very general requirements. So having coming the data into a CSV form or in a text file, okay, and uh, which is unstructured actually, but following a some specific pattern. So every line you need to format accordingly. So then finally uh, corresponding data should come and in, bring into corresponding columns. Okay, so this is one general requirements. Hope you understand this scenario. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share the video.